this this guy right here on the Suzuki, we'll take a look at the Kawasaki and we'll take a look at the Yamaha. When I move the shift lever, do you see what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Okay, that what that's gonna do is gonna rotate the shift drum. Now when I I was I was up shifting, so I'm pulling the lever up. I'm gonna pull it with my foot. And if I go down, you see how it goes the other direction? Right. Okay, I just want to point out a couple of things here that are going on. Do you notice this spring in here? Yeah. And this pin? So watch what happens. I'm going to upshift. So I'm actually physically going to pull it up, and the spring is what pulls this back down to what we call the neutral position. Not neutral gear, neutral position. That's where your shift lever always falls back down on its own. And when I downshift, do you see how I let go of it? And that spring is what pulls it back into that same exact foot position every single time. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, could you call this the lever return position spring? Sure. Mm -hmm. One term for it or whatnot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and shift this transmission. Do you notice how I put the transmission level? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I have it laying on its side, all the weight of the gear's gravity will actually hold them against the shift dogs and it can lock it up and seem like there's a problem when there really isn't. You have to, if you're going to practice shifting through your transmission to kind of give it a test fit, you need to be in an actual level position just like it would be in the motorcycle. So is everybody clear about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead here and downshift, which would be first gear. And what i got to kind of do is just rotate this a little bit. So these two gears now are physically locked because, do you hear that? Yeah. So if I, if I go from my crank and I rotate the main shaft, you'll see the counter shaft is turning. Okay? All right, now watch this. Now I'm going to go ahead and halfway between most all of our street bikes, it's down one, then halfway up is neutral, a half step. So I just did a little half click here. Now what happens, I'm going to hold the counter shaft sprocket, and do you see how I could turn that? Right. That's neutral. It means I'm not engaged at all. I have no spinning. Now if I let go of this, Watch what happens. It looks like they're locked, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's because there's so much weight and drag on those transmission shafts that it, it gives you a false indication that they're physically connected. They are not. That's what we call our constant mesh transmission. Once again, I'm going to hold this, and you'll see that I can spin them both, and that is a true neutral. Okay? I'm going to shift again, but I might have to rotate that a little bit. Why am I having to rotate the shaft a little bit? Any because idea? Our design. engines are not meant to be able to go from fist, first to fifth gear like you can with a car transmission, right? right. You can you can take those and you could be going along and you can just shift in any gear. We have to go through the gears to get to the next one. So we have to do first, go into second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. We can't skip a gear. Does that make sense? Yep. You can do what's called short shifting where you have a damaged gear and it'll allow you to go in it, not put any load on it, and then double shift shift again, and then you'll go to third and fourth and, and so on. So a lot of guys, when second gear starts to wear out, the most common one is they will short shift past it, just give it a double click to get into third and then to not have to do a transmission. Does anybody know why second gear is the common one to go out? Yeah, it's the one you beat on the bike the most. Most everybody is a, is a, ch a super bike champion or a motocross champion in second gear. <laughs> most everybody is. It it's also close. the gear that we do a lot of wheelies in. Okay, If we want to just honk on it and drop the clutch. Um, so it's a very abused gear. Um, we don't typically see fifth or sixth gear ever be damaged. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just curious. I want to test the transmission. That would be third, fourth, fifth. I'm bottomed out here, okay? Now I'm in six. So just reversing it. Do you hear it snapping into place? Okay. I'm going to disassemble this quick. I just want us to be able to get to that point. So I got to get this, this out of here because it's crossing my seam. Make right. sense? Yeah. There's two things I need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get my shifter off here. I'm going to look for some indicator or line that will um, point me in the right direction. I don't see anything on here. So from my opening, just like that. Oh man, I got a germ all over it. Yeah, I wash yeah. that thing. Right through the washing machine. Yeah. Anybody, anybody think that if you were the one taking this bolt out right now, you'd be like, uh, I don't know, something might be wrong with that. That's just a little six by one, and it's being pretty hard to get out of there. There's a really good chance it's bent or cross-threaded. Oh, think it's bad? Stripped. 
Look at all the uh, stripped aluminum threads in there. Oh, yeah. Okay? It was just being difficult. I even think that it might be bent. Well, usually, usually what happens, let me have the bolt. Usually what happens is, you got to remember, you're going through that shifter, and you're going across here, and if, if a person doesn't have doesn't have this on far enough, so say they go right here, and I'm not, I'm not all the way on, I'm stronger than those splines, and I can drag that across those splines, and I'll get it in there. Anytime you do this, what you should be able to do is you should be able to put this in free as can be and get all the way up to the thread. You should never have to drag it across the splines. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So... What do I need to do to my work order right now? Write down that I need a new screw. I need some repair. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just push this through here. And you'll see that. Here's something I want to give you guys some warning. Almost every single one of these, and I'm not seeing it on this, has a shim right here. Okay, because we have steel going against aluminum case. So what I expected to see on here was a little uh, steel washer. So what, since I don't have it, what do I need to do? Make a note on the work order to say, hey, I need to look that up. But you guys just need to get in the habit of that. This is a common one that when people take them apart on the bench, that shim falls off and then they don't know what to do with it or they drop an oil pan or something else. Are you clear? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The other thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this seal out because this is going to help me. We guys really pay attention to me on this. This is extremely, extremely common that there's an O-ring on the shaft underneath here. Oh, it, they, they're there. You see the two O-rings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is a dirt bike thing, alright? You with me? Mm -hmm. These O-rings if you don't take these O-rings off, it's, and it's common that there's two of them. I try to split this case, and you don't have that off. I've seen people crack the cases. Oh, wow. Yep, it's a bad deal, okay? 